What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're gonna be visiting Dirt King Fabrication. We're gonna be going over the process of building aftermarket control arms. What are some of the benefits to upgrading and take advantage that we're here to install their kit on our third gen Tacoma. Now let's go inside and meet the owner. My name's Dustin, I'm the co-founder and co-owner of Dirt King Fabrication. What's up dude, really happy to be here. I was really excited when I found out that you built this new lower control arms for the Tacoma. Tell me a little bit about them. So yeah, these are our all new lower control arms. They're a lot stronger structure compared to the factory control arms. And then some of the nice benefits about it is they allow for more articulation with the down inner bushings. And they have a, a new um, ball joint outer pivot. We did side by side comparisons with a uniball and a ball joint. And what we found was that with the ball joint, it actually tracks a lot better compared to a uniball. So it's good for those people that want to go out off-roading and then still use it as a daily driver. Now, dude, one thing that I've always been crazy about is like the process that goes into building these things. I mean, it just fascinates me, the fabrication, the engineering behind it. Tell me a little bit about this. So there's a lot of steps in making a new product, and that's why, you know, it takes a little bit of time to release these things. So where it all starts is in CAD. What we do is we start with the concept of what we're trying to achieve. We go into CAD and see if it's achievable. From there, we you know, finalize everything, build the prototype. From there, we're validating our CAD to see if what we designed, if it really works in reality. Once we validated it, we go back to CAD and then turn that prototype part into a production part. Once we've done that, we send it off to laser, get it in a pallet of laser cut parts that are all press broke and ready to be welded up, we do a production run, send to powder coat, and uh, do final assembly and then it's a product that's ready to ship. That's awesome man, that process, that like just the whole fabricating part of the, the thing is just, it's crazy. Now let's go ahead and talk about these upper control arms that's going to be installed in the truck. Uh, what, what are we installing on ours? So you guys will be installing our control arms, our tubular design. They feature a uh, polyurethane bushing at the inner pivot and a ball joint at the outer pivot. The nice thing about having a ball joint on this type of application is it's less maintenance and it's really good just for you know an all-around use as far as daily driving and off-road use. Now tell me a little bit of the benefits of upgrading to uh, aftermarket control arms. So the best, it's kind of like one of the best things to start out when, when you first buy a vehicle and you want to do something to it. You kind of start with you know wanting to change the wheels and tires. So in order to do that you need to add lift to the vehicle. So what you want to do is get a replacement front coilover or strut and then you need to combine that with the upper control arm. What the upper control arm does is it allows for the additional down travel that the uh, shock provides, and then it also corrects the geometry uh, by adding caster. So the way that the suspension is on the Tacoma is they have a lot of anti-dive in them, and what that means is that as you increase the lift, you decrease caster. So that's why it's super important on the Tacoma is to add the caster in there as you lift the vehicle. Now, someone, the cool thing about this, and I always say it on the videos is, Dude, basically we're messing around with Lego pieces, right? It, they're so interchangeable. You, you can first upgrade your suspension system the way that we did. We have the beginner level, it's an Eibach Pro Truck lift system. And we've been rocking it for now, you know, for about a year now. But now it's time to upgrade to upper and lower control arms just to get the best out of it. But it's not something like you need to blow all your money on. You can first upgrade your suspension and then slowly upgrade your upper control arm and then you're lower if you're deciding to stay with the stock lane, correct? <laughs> that is correct to an extent. The, the biggest thing is, is know what shocks you're purchasing. Some okay. shocks work with OEM upper control arms, some shocks do not. Some require the upper control arm because of the additional down travel. What will happen is with the stock upper control arm, you'll be maxing out the ball joint. Okay. And basically what it'll do is make that ball joint prematurely fail. So that is kind of why ball joints have a bad, uh, you know, a bad rap is because they're what come on a stock vehicle, and they're what fail when people set up their suspension not properly. So when all installed properly, and we also use the heavy duty Moog ball joints, it's something that will last a very long time and outperform basically a uniball. And on top of all that, you're not gonna have any noises that often become you know, quite annoying. Let's move on to talking about the long, long travel, 
right? Because you have your stock length and Correct. then you have the long travel side of things. Let's talk a little bit about that. So long travel is really good for people that are doing high speed off-road. Um, it's a basically extended uh, suspension. We get this asked, question asked all the time. If I buy your upper control arms, can I do the long travel lower control arms? The answer to that is no. You need to buy the whole kit because the upper and lower control arms are extended three and a half inches. Okay. So basically the steering, the axles, the control arms, everything's extended, extend brake lines. So that's why it needs to be purchased as a kit and you can't just upgrade it like you can with a stock width kit. Okay. And I mean, I don't really need long, long travel for the third gen because that's not really the route that we're going for. Mm -hmm. We're going for, you know, I want a stock length, over landing, I want to be, you know, be able to squeeze through the trails. Correct. So with what you're trying to do and what we've talked about, basically this setup is perfect for that application. It's a stock width setup, allows for more articulation, you get additional down travel with our upper control arms. And uh, with that, you also have the corrected geometry that we have built into the upper control arms. So basically for what you're trying to do, this is the perfect setup. With long travel, it may not be the best case because you're not doing high speed and some of the trails that you're going on may be a little bit tighter where you don't want the additional track width. Yeah. And which I, I do have the long travel kit from you guys on the second gen and man, boy, do you have fun with those. I mean, just Absolutely. being able to just hit it hard, 60 miles per hour, 100 miles per hour through a whoop section, or just not being, you know, you're not scared to really hit whether you're gonna be jumping or whether you're gonna be going through a crazy, you know, whoop section or anything like that. You know that it's gonna be able to take the hit. Right, the only downside to that is compared to the stock width stuff is you're spending a lot more money because you have to get, you know, extended axles and the whole kit and you have to get the longer coilovers. But if that's what you're doing with the vehicle, it's kind of a must. So there is pros and cons on both sides. Um, it just kind of all depends on what you're going to do with the vehicle. Cool, cool. Now let's talk a little bit about installation. Can the average Joe install this on their truck? So yeah, but pretty much anyone can install this in their driveway. We do recommend though, if you're going to be doing this type of suspension system, you have a professional install it just so that you ensure everything's installed properly. You know, you're going to be driving on the vehicle with your friends, family and stuff. You want to make sure it's done right and then properly aligned. The installation on it is fairly simple. Basically, you're replacing stock components with aftermarket components. No cutting or welding required unless you're adding a limit strap with it. Okay. So. And there's also tons of videos out there I've noticed that show how to do the whole process. I've seen it a couple times. It's honestly not that hard. No. Um, but basically, I'm really excited, man, that I'm going to get your kit installed into the truck. Um, it's something that I knew I had to do. I knew that, you know, getting myself in the conditions, going through the trails that I go on, I had to, up I have to upgrade my upper and lower control arms. I just had to, uh, just... It's a very good precaution. Yeah. You want to upgrade it before you have a problem. The, the thing is that the factory control arms, they weren't intended to originally be, take this type of abuse. Where our control arms, they're solely made to withstand that and be able to have, you know, just regular day-to-day -day driving. So it's definitely good to, to do, think about that before there's an issue. Yeah, dude, I was reading an article of how basically all the impact gets transferred from the tire. First place that it goes to is to the lower control arm. That gets transferred onto the shock, the springs, and then basically, what's the function of the upper control arm again? It's basically- See, the upper control arm basically keeps the uh, wheel within alignment. So it, it handles basically the camber change uh, throughout the suspension cycle. So the shock absorber is taken majority of all the you know all the dampening where all the control arms are holding the wheel in place and taking some of the force as well but that's why it's important to have a good shock absorber and also making sure that your pivots are you know made of the right material because otherwise if it's all really rigid you're going to feel every little crack in the road but Perfect. you know sometimes there's pros and cons of everything sometimes that's just kind of what you have to uh, do to try and get your vehicle aligned. Well I'm excited man thanks for having me um, I'll make sure to keep everyone posted as far as how it performs. I know I love it on my second gen. I mean, it's one of the coolest things that I've done to it, being able to just feel like everything is good when you hit the whoops and stuff like that. Absolutely. So I'm really excited, man. And uh, the new the new lower controllers that you guys built, I mean, with that skid, apart from its performance, it just looks so clean. Yeah, there's no denying that. It's such looks... a clean look, man. You Thank guys you. killed it. Thank you. So, hey, thanks a lot for having me, man. Yep. All right, so Dirt King suspension system has been installed on the truck. It's been exactly three weeks since we installed it. From San Diego, we basically drove all the way down to Mexico uh, to document Brandon Walsh race the Baja 400. We actually chased his chase team all around Mexico. We got to see how the pit stop works and all that. And during this process towards nighttime, we actually had 
H we had to use our truck as uh, to go save them. So we winched them out. This video is actually going to be available a week from when we release this video. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is because during this time we actually were able to test out the suspension system and really bang it up. I mean, we drove five miles on the Baja course and this is some gnarly stuff. I mean, this is some stuff that the trophy crazy trophy trucks are going through. Uh, it was a rocky section. We bottomed out a bunch of times. I mean, it was, it was gnarly. During this time, I really enjoyed the suspension system overall. I can only say good things about it. So I'm gonna continue to keep you guys posted through our future videos. Make sure to stay tuned for that. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. And make sure to hit that little bell icon so YouTube can notify you when we release a new video. Because if you don't, then you're never gonna find out unless YouTube suggests it, which most of the time they don't. So if you guys are interested in the content that we're throwing out, make sure to hit that little bell icon. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video.